When dealing with a video, we really need to pay attention to color. If our video is blue or orange, it will be immediately noticeable to our viewer and can detract from our project's message. The first thing we can do to make sure our colors are correct is to white balance using the camera. This should be done before ever pressing record. Unlike our eyes, digital cameras can't tell what true white is in various lighting situations. To help them establish true white, we need to give them a little assistance. You can see in these two examples that the camera on the left isn't white balanced at all. In fact, it's blue. The camera on the right was white balanced correctly. To manually white balance, a pure white card or a white piece of paper as seen here is held up in front of the camera. The camera can then analyze that white paper and determine the surrounding color temperature. The process of white balancing will be different on every camera due to varying menus and button configurations, but the end result will be the same. There are also auto white balancing settings on most cameras, but the best way to establish true white is to manually white balance. You can white balance inside After Effects, and I will show you how to do this later, but it is a best practice to do this in camera. It will save you a large amount of time in post-production. There are two other concepts we need to focus on when talking about color in our videos. Color correction and color grading. These terms are often used interchangeably, but they really shouldn't be. To demonstrate, I have applied the Lumetri color effect to this mountain biking video. You will see how to apply effects later on in the course. When it comes to color correction and color grading, color correction should always be done first. When correcting a video's color, we are trying to get everything to look as natural to the eye as possible. This involves getting our whites and blacks to be as true to life as we can. If someone forgot to white balance in camera, we would want to take care of it when color correcting, using a tool like the white balance selector, which doesn't do much here as this video was white balanced properly. Color correction also involves changing the brightness of a video. If, for example, the exposure was set too high or low while filming. We can change the contrast, the amount of highlights and shadows, and again, our white and black values, if needed. At this stage, we would also want to repair any noise in our video using an effect like remove grain. Noise and grain can happen as a result of shooting at a high ISO in a dark room. Remember, when color correcting, we are trying to make our video look as true to life as possible. I'll reset those settings. Color grading, on the other hand, is more of an artistic endeavor. Think of it as adding a filter to an Instagram photo. It's the process of using colors and hues to set a certain atmosphere or mood in a scene. Are we going for a somber feeling? If so, we can change the hue or dominant color to more of a bluish color. There we go. Going for a techie matrix kind of vibe? Make that thing more green. I am moving the tint slider, which actually adds or takes away the white value of a color. Colors can have a tremendous impact on your audience. They can make them feel warm and cozy or extremely anxious. Always think of the mood you or your client are trying to set within a production. These changes are more extreme than in color correcting and often add a lot of time to the post-production process. If we really wanted to get into the nitty gritty of color grading, we wouldn't use these basic settings, which I will turn off. We would use the curves, color wheels, and HSL secondary section, but these are well beyond the scope of the exam. Adobe does offer looks, as seen in the creative section, that allow us to quickly color grade our video, such as the SL Clean Kodak C HDR, or SL Blue Cold. More so than anything, make sure that you know the difference between color correction and color grading. 